Welcome back to ERA TV, where we get some great ideas from the movers and shakers in the direct response business. I'm Craig Burnett here with Peter Marinello. And Peter, I'm not even going to try to tell people what you do because you do so much. Give us a little overview. Oh, well, uh, I appreciate that intro. Um, uh, I direct the uh, advertising uh, self-regulation uh, program, particularly for direct response advertisers. Uh, we began the process in 2004, really because of uh, a lot of egregious uh, claims that were being disseminated in the marketplace. Uh, since that time, we've probably completed uh, in the neighborhood of about 275 cases. Uh, we had four real goals in mind. Uh, to enhance uh, consumer confidence in electronic uh, retail advertising, to also provide an expeditious forum to resolve these complaints. Do it quickly. We don't want companies to have to uh, worry about being caught up in court for a couple of years. This is advertising. This is kind of hit or miss, and you know they're in and out in six months. So you really do need a very quick, expeditious process. Uh, also, we want to get the egregious claims off the air, get them off the air quickly. And finally, we want to demonstrate to the regulators out there, the FTCs, the state attorney generals, guys like that, that this industry is really committed to meaningful, voluntary self-regulation. Do you find that even, even with that self-regulation goal, do you find the governments are starting to encroach more into our business and trying to exercise more control? You know what? I actually kind of feel the opposite. I think since they do know that this process is in place, they back off a little bit. I think one of the reasons why this process was started was because of the intervention of the government into their business. And the fact that the government sees that this industry is committed to regulating amongst themselves, I think it allows them to back off a little bit. Is it hard to stay ahead of all of the changes in regulations and, and the fine-tuning that the FTC and other regulatory agencies do um, to our business, is it hard to stay ahead of that and what's the best way for someone to do that? You know what, it's a great question. I think part of my job is to make sure that I keep abreast of what's going on in the regulatory world. It does help that my boss is an old FTC guy. Yeah, uh, yeah he used to be the Associate Director of the uh, Division of Consumer Protection over the FTC. So he really has his finger on the pulse of the regulatory world and that kind of filters down to myself a little bit. And one of the great things about this job is that I have the luxury and the benefit of all of the players in the industry. Uh, they, again, they know what's going on in the industry. They know uh, what the new regulatory uh, loopholes might be. And uh, we, in a way, we kind of help each other out that way. And there's some really good dialogue between my organization, <coughs> excuse me, and, uh, and all the members of the industry. Yeah. So do you think that because of your involvement in this area, uh, and, and the involvement of others that, that we've kind of gotten to the point where we've gotten most of the scalawags out of the business or are there always going to be those guys? You know, it, it's funny. Um, what I've learned is that um, generally 98% of the players are good guys and good plays, but you're always going to have that 2% that push the envelope a little bit. You know, it's interesting because uh, this group of advertisers, they're very entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times there is that line that you know, unfortunately gets a little bit blurry and people try to tiptoe over the line. You know, there is sure. some creative license here. So it's my job to make sure that people, while it's maybe okay to straddle on a little bit, you can't encroach too much over. Right. So what would be the most important thing for you to impart to people who are wondering uh, how to stay on the right side of the law and away from all the regulatory things, what's the best plan of action for them, do you think? Yeah, there are a couple of things. Is coming um, to an event like this, is that a good thing? I think it is. I think it is because uh, it allows you to kind of see what everybody else is doing. It allows you to kind of see what other representations are being made, albeit even in an, in an exhibit hall like this, there are still some very powerful and meaningful claims being disseminated right here. As a matter of fact, I may pick up a few cases just walking around <laughs> the room a little bit. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, I do think that's very important as well, yeah. Yeah. Well, Peter, thanks for uh, keeping us all honest, and thanks for joining us sure, today. Sure, I appreciate your time. Right. Thank and you very much. Thank you for watching ERA TV. I'm Craig Burnett. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.